how did it feel? How did it feel to climb the hardest and most badass boulder of your life so far? Yeah, it felt good. And I was talking about this this weekend. It was like, it was really a lot of a, it was a slow build. And in, in a lot of ways it felt anticlimactic actually, which is kind of funny. But yeah, I think at first it really felt like, you know, anytime that you do the hardest boulder that you've ever done and it didn't feel particularly um, different from that, then um, like kind of sharing a little bit more and thinking about it in like a bigger context, it definitely obviously feels different, super meaningful. And yeah, I'm just like, I'm proud of myself for for doing it. And it was a really cool experience. Um, and I feel like it's opened opened some doors for me. It, yeah. I hope so. It should have. Like this is legendary news, you know. It's um, thanks. <laughs> why why this boulder? I think that was something I was really curious about right away. Like you haven't climbed V fifteen yet, but more than that, this one's just tough, dude. Like the hike. I, I remember reading just recently. I was reading a written article by you. You said you know seven sessions, and you estimated that you hiked like ninety miles to do this boulder or something like that. Six miles each way. It's way the hell back there in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, Colorado. Why box therapy? Why was that your project this summer? Yeah, I feel like I hadn't really tried any V15s um, and didn't have any on my radar that were in season, um, like in a place that I wanted to be in that season and um, that were in my style. So I felt like box was like a pretty obvious next project for me and was likely going to be easier than like almost all the V15s on my list just because of the style. Like it, it fits me so well, it only has a sense from short people. And I was just going to be in Colorado for the summer. What was it about that seventh day where um, did you just, was it just like the day where everything lined up? You felt good. The weather was good. Uh, you know, presumably you, you'd gotten stronger from trying it for seven weeks. Yeah, I definitely like went into it with a, a learning mentality, which was good. Uh, like, yeah, my my goal for the day, what would have like been a huge accomplishment for me was doing the Starlink. Um, and I think just having like lower expectations um or reasonable expectations is really helpful. Um, and I feel like I just felt like pretty like light mentally that day. Like it was just like a beautiful day and I was just going to try. And um, yeah, I went alone and it was like, it felt like it always feels a little more adventurous when you go alone. Um, and like there's an element of just like survival that's kind of fun. Um, so I think that actually helped me just like mm. um, kind of tuning everything out and having a day out with myself. What did you do when you sent? Like, did you just sit on top of the boulder for a while? Um, yeah, I did. I, I, th I, I thought I sat on top of it for a while, but I think I was probably only up there for like three or four minutes. Um, and then, yeah, ate a big lunch um, after that. And... Then it uh, it quickly starts to get dark up there. So I was like, I should start walking before it gets dark. So I honestly didn't linger that much. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like a, a moment of peace. <laughs> mm. Hey friends, I'm interrupting my own video to tell you guys about follow-up episodes. So the video that you're watching right now is from a follow-up episode that I did on the podcast, which means that the full version is only available for patrons who support the podcast for $5 per month or more. You can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash the nugget climbing. There's a link right there in the description for this video. Again, five bucks per month, super quick and easy to sign up and you can cancel at any time, no questions asked. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. And that kind of goes back to a question I thought I would ask you at the start of this convo, um, because, you know, I mentioned I, I heard the news from Ethan right away. And then uh, you and Keenan like to sit on your news. I think that's interesting. You guys really like you do epic stuff and then no one hears about it for a month. Um, why is that? Why do you guys both tend to sit on your news and not share things right away? Um, is it important for you to have some time to process things? Or is it just like the logistics of what are we going to do with the video and sponsors and stuff like that? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's both. I like to have a little bit of processing time. Um, and I'm never like secretive about it. Like if it, like a bunch of people knew I was trying and I told them um, that I did it. You know, it wasn't like, oh, maybe I did it. I don't know. But I was I was very like forthcoming with it in person. Um, and yeah, I think that it can feel like, oh, this is like just for me and like my closest friends for a little bit. Um, mm. Like this is this is something that like I can really enjoy and like, you know, like go out to dinner and like, you know, like have fun climbing days where you're just like hanging out with people with like zero expectation of performance. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's always like the best part of sending for me is like just sort of the release that comes after and like taking in like everything that it took to like get to that point. Um, and thinking of it as a holistic process, a part of it is just logistics, like figuring out like what to do with the video. Um, I am so slow to write Instagram captions. (laughs) Because totally it's really hard to like summarize a experience in like four sentences. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I procrastinate on it and don't like doing it. But um, that's sort of just a logistic. But yeah, I don't know. I think with certain things, it can definitely feel good to just be like, yeah, I did this yesterday. And I'm so psyched. Like, I, I definitely have, have been there, too. So mm. it just depends. OK, yeah, that makes sense. Well, it's. It's awesome to get news right away, but in a way it almost does. I don't know if it cheapens things or it just, it's just so like a flash in the pan, you know, like when someone's like, I did this yesterday or I did this earlier today. Here's the video already on Instagram, you know, boom. Um, Then we forget about it in a week. And I don't know why, but it feels like if you wait and then drop it, it like we carry that, um, that kind of like longer time frame forward in in an interesting way. I mean, maybe that's just because this is like really big news, but um, yeah, we're, we've lost a lot of that. And I think it's really cool to kind of be surprised by what someone did in climbing. I remember, yeah. you know, I think I learned about Chris Sharma doing Jumbo Love by like watching progression. You know what I mean? Like it was probably year, it was like two years or something after he did it, but the internet was different back then. And I had no idea. I was like a 20 year old college kid or something. Um, yeah. And I miss that kind of thing. I think it's really cool that, that you guys um, are kind of, um, yeah, I don't know, like, like maintaining that a little bit. Yeah. No, I definitely agree that with you. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like, yeah, news is, a, it can feel like inconsequential if it is like sort of just the latest news cycle. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, like, want to, like, have, like, an air of pretension about it, sort of, like, oh, this is, like, big news, we're, like, withholding from the world, but um, I think, yeah, it, it can, it, if it's actually meaningful, then it feels like it takes some time to, like, process and tell people, and and um, hopefully people don't forget about it as quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 